Welcome to another edition of the Two World Podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Jacob, and I have with me today... I am Barney. Thanks for joining me, Barney. Uh, Today we're going to be discussing Vacation Bible School. Barney and I were recently brainstorming topics to explore, and since it's summertime, this is one that we thought would be interesting. And since I've been in ministry, I've been able to participate in a number of Vacation Bible Schools, and each one was a little different. But just for our audience sake, Barney, how would you quickly summarize what a Vacation Bible School is? Yeah, based on my experience, I guess it's um, a, a week maybe in summer vacation where um, I think from Monday to Friday, the kids go um, every day to church and um, there are so many different activities. And of course, there's usually some overarching theme. Um, and um, in my case, I always remembered that we were always trying to um, help raise money for something. And um, and there was always time where usually we started out with time with with worship where every group age group was together and then later went to our different um, uh, uh, different classrooms um, and then usually had activities um, together and then separately throughout the day. But I remember that it was such a long time, but it was just something that I always look forward to um, every year. Oh, that's really interesting. And I, I remember similar experiences too f- from the church that I grew up in uh, about a week long and having uh, one theme. Mm-hmm. And um, it's interesting because at this point, I've been able to be involved with the planning and the, you know, the performing of or putting on a vacation Bible school also alongside having gone through one as a child. And so it's mm-hmm. interesting to to look at it from both angles. And one of the things I thought would be interesting for our audience is just to kind of paint a picture from a, from each perspective. Um, So Mm -hmm. from a participant's perspective, vacation Bible school was full of games and um, snack foods and um, fun activities and singing, a lot of singing. Mm -hmm. In fact, some vacation Bible schools, these days will even if you buy like a curriculum package for one they'll even have a cd of unique music mm-hmm. to sing just for that week of songs specifically made for the theme and um but anyway I had lots of singing and probably the most important part it would be the volunteers like often older youth and adults would be the ones that would be there to lead the singing in the games and to tell the stories and um, relate it to the messages of the Bible and of Jesus. And so, um, so Barney, like when you think back on, on your vacation Bible school experiences, like what stands out to you? How would you describe what it felt like to participate in those? Yeah, it was um, something that was so neat to kind of have a church that was just meant for you at that time. You know, I think, I think probably a lot of kids, you know, of course feel that it's um, at their age, when they're vacation Bible school age, it's a little bit harder to relate to church and on, on a weekly basis, what is happening there. And then um, there's this one week out of the year where everything is centered on, on you and on, um, you know, everything's relatable and, you know, these Bible stories or the theme or whatever really comes alive. And um, like you say, they're, different people from the church are uh, active and participating in a different way than what you see them um, normally. And, you know, like dressing up or putting on some kind of play or something. Um, And yeah, just, um, I think at that time for me, I think it was always in June and the summer, the weather wasn't so hot. So it was really fun to be outside when we were doing things outside and, um, yeah, like the the songs and everything, everything just since it was geared toward children, everything felt so special. And um, I, I just really liked that so much about Vacation Bible School. Um, do you remember who some of the leaders were when you were participating in that? I know that um, I know that uh, Loretta Bauer and Leona Hurst were always involved, um, but other than that, I don't have so much recollection 
Yes. And um, in the songs that you sang, were most of them camp songs or did you sing any songs that you knew from church that were kind of ones that you did when you were with the adults or were most of them kind of selected to be more just specifically for, for children? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. A uh, good question. Um, I, I, I don't think, I mean, I remember that the songs were always fun, but I kind of always thought that they were along the line of um, the really, really old, uh, um, like al alternative um, hymnal, the sing and rejoice one. Okay. The, the thin green one. So I think that they were um, mostly from there. Okay. Um, I did, yeah, I, as I recall. Interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the church that I grew up in um, was a, had a little bit more contemporary expressions of, of music. In fact, it was called the vineyard and a lot of the songs that were written for that church setting were like from the eighties and nineties. And cause mm -hmm. it wasn't a very old denomination, but mm -hmm. I remember in terms of kids songs, we sang um, a lot of the camp songs that you would think of mm -hmm. from maybe the seventies or eighties, like uh, uh -huh. deep and wide, um, deep oh, yeah. and wide, mm -hmm. deep and wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. And then, um, do you know the one, I just want to be a sheep. Have you heard that one? No. Um, I just want to be a sheep. Bah, bah. I just want to be a sheep. Bah, bah. And it goes through this whole scenario of things that the person doesn't want to be. Um, mm. I don't want to be a hypocrite because they're mm. not hip with it. I don't want to be a Sadducee because they're so sad. You see, uh, <laughs> then it finally comes nice, nice. I just want to be a sheep. Um, so we had a lot of songs like that. And I remember my mom would, would help sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, she would play an auto harp when she would sing, which is kind of an unusual instrument um, to think of at a vacation Bible school, but she would, she would help with that sometimes. And then as our, as I got older, you know, I remember other, you know, musicians and people being involved, but, but yeah, that, that's so interesting. Um, and then um, mostly then it was, you went to vacation Bible school at Worcester Mennonite, I'm guessing, was it held there at the oh, church? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, yeah. Most, I think a lot of churches do hold them in their own facility, but sometimes they'll um, go to another location like a camp or a park or um, some churches even, um, will come together with other churches to put mm -hmm. them on. And so I was wondering if, if we could explore a little bit about different approaches to vacation Bible oh, yeah. school. Mm -hmm. And um, if it's all right, I was going to share a few slides. Great. Um, this first slide is actually something we did before I was working at Worcester Mennonite as a pastor. Um, one summer, instead of doing vacation Bible school in the traditional way, we decided we would do a block party and then have kids activities as well as things for adults all at the same time and try to intersperse mm -hmm. games and, um, and snacks and food and singing with some spiritual things too. And mm -hmm. so this is just a picture from that block party that we did. I want to say maybe that was like 2000 and, nine or something maybe it was oh. it was far back there um yeah. and um or here we are passing out bubble wands but oh, yeah. um, but i was going back getting ready for today and looking at my google calendar for oh, yeah. vacation bible school dates uh -huh. and i think that i've been involved with five or six of them since i've been a pastor at worcester mennonite but then some years we did something different and this is one of those examples where we did like a block party instead. Wow. And so I think, you know, you sacrifice when you do something like that, that kind of um, multi-day feeling and going oh, deeper right. with the kids mm -hmm. for something mm -hmm. that's larger that their families can come to mm -hmm. as well. So I guess it was a little bit of a mixed bag, but we were just trying something new that year. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was going to share with you um, one of our guests who appeared in this podcast a while back, Molly Sponsler. Oh, yeah. Um, organized Vacation Bible School one year. And she organized it 
with an outside group that she had been a part of when she was growing up called Child Evangelism Fellowship. Huh? And it was so interesting because they came in and they did the VBS in our space, but like they had a very clear, almost like a laser beam focus on specifically evangelism. Um, as you could tell, probably from the name of the organization, mm-hmm. Child Evangelism Fellowship. And so mm-hmm. a lot of the week with our children was spent on explaining who Jesus was and what the gospel mm-hmm. is. And mm-hmm. um, I remember at the end of that week, we had um, a worship service and the Child Evangelism Fellowship team invited kids to come forward to receive Christ um, at, in response to the week of mm. leading up to that time. And it was really interesting because for our um, Mennonite tradition, mm-hmm. I think focuses on, um, it, this is just my own experience maybe, right. but um, it focuses on like faith formation, like in the home and Sunday school class, and then um, getting people to the place of uh, where it's presented and they can understand and respond. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it, it goes, flows right into baptism and right. things like mm-hmm. that. But, but we don't really do altar calls as much, at least mm-hmm. not in that way. And that, but that was an opportunity that coming from a different, you know, perspective where oh, yeah. our kids responded to a number of kids went forward. And oh, that, wow. was, that was really special. Yeah. So that was something that was unique that Molly had made that connection at the time. Um, and it was, it was kind of a cross pollination, I guess you would say, of different yeah. Christian approaches that are traditions. Um, but sp- speaking of that, I wanted to share a little bit of, of uh, both an interesting and a hard memory around Vacation Bible School. Um, so you see here this display G Force, um, you yeah. know, like God Force, you know, um, I this, get you. Th- this uh, theme for that year. And um, a, a bunch of the churches in the area decided to do an ecumenical vacation Bible school and first Presbyterian would host it in their facility, but it included St. James Episcopal church and St. Mary's Catholic church, uh, first Presbyterian church, um, the Christian science church that's um, Mm. on Cleveland road, I think close to Cleveland road. Mm -hmm. Um, And then um, Worcester Mennonite participated. But I remember when I sent out, information to parents to say, you know, this is a possibility. Do we want to mm-hmm. do this? We had a lot of discussion about, I was very excited that it was ecumenical, but people right. were really concerned about the, the, the participation of the Christian science group, mm-hmm. because, you know, in terms of doctrine, it probably would be the most distinct and probably, right. um, I don't know, would be the one that would be furthest away from Mennonite in certain mm-hmm. areas, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, mm-hmm. I remember we we worked through that and some of the parents were like, you know, an ecumenical vacation Bible school means like that we like look for what we have in common and mm. and we know and we can explain to our kids that there are differences, you know, with mm-hmm. the other churches. Mm-hmm. But what we're doing when we participate in this is focusing on what we have in common. But then yeah. some parents were like, well, we're just concerned that if there's volunteers from this Christian science group that they might you know, share doctrine or something that we're not comfortable with. So ultimately what ended up happening is we all talked about it and we participated, but then we just had volunteers from our church, make sure that they were plugged in with all the activities so that they felt like, okay, if we have a volunteer from our church, if anything were to come up, then at least that volunteer could, you know, explain to our kids oh, what was right. what it meant or from a mm-hmm. Mennonite perspective. So, but um, I remember at the time feeling like, because, you know, me, I'm real passionate about mm-hmm. you know, Christian partnership and ecumenism. Mm-hmm. I remember thinking, oh, it's so sad, like, that this is such a scary thing. But then yeah. at, at the end of the day, um, the fact that we were able to do it and come up with a solution it oh, felt yeah. good. And then when we went, it was really fun. And I think the kids oh, really enjoyed meeting the kids from all the different um, churches. And so we, en- I think we only ended up doing that once w- mm-hmm. in that with that particular group, or maybe twice, but it was a really interesting yeah, that's such a neat idea because I think, um, especially for kids, that it's hard to kind of think about being aware of um, kind of the the way that Christianity works um, in other churches, the way that other churches partic- have um, um, the service goes there or, or whatnot. Because I think that when you're um, at school, you don't necessarily 
think about associating with your friends um, in uh, you know in a Christian way, or you know you know saying, oh hey, I go to church, do you go to church, or or whatnot. You know, it's not one of those topics that comes up so much as you just kind of think that oh, I bet every Bible school kind of goes like mine does, and and the chance to um, see probably see some of the kids from your own schools at at different churches and. Um, experience things, um, you know, the different flavor of the different um, that the different churches would bring, but then seeing the connection uh, in the end, I think that is such a really neat idea. And um, yes, and some, yeah, something never would have dawned on me um, to do. And I, it's um, I'm glad I'm glad that in the end um, it went smoothly and, and that everyone could participate in that. Uh, yeah, thanks, Barney. That's a really good point. Yeah, it is. A, it was a unique opportunity for our children because you're right. That's not typically a, a type of interaction or a way of, of inter- discussing, you know, among other mm-hmm. students that you'd think mm-hmm. of, but um, it was a really unique opportunity. And mm. um, we had a similar thing and a few years later, this here is actually a, a picture of the CD cover. You know, oh. I mentioned before that different, uh-huh. um, Vacation Bible schools have the music. And so this is the one that they released, uh, Roar, Life is Wild, God is Good. And um, this was actually another joint Vacation Bible School that we participated in, but this time with Mennonite churches. And this oh, one cool. was held at Oak Grove Mennonite, but we had um, Worcester Mennonite participants. We had people from Orville Mennonite. We had people from Martin's Mennonite and Crown Hill Mennonite. And um, I think Salem Mennonite on back Orville Road. Mm. It was a very interesting partnership and there was a lot of preparation leading up to it mm-hmm. um across you know volunteers from all the churches ahead of time and then when it finally came together it was actually a really special vacation mm-hmm. bible school and in that case you know here you had once again multiple churches doing it but then since we were of the same tradition it mm-hmm. didn't have the same um what do i want to say um unique like theological challenges we had to think mm-hmm. through. It was kind mm-hmm. of more like, oh, we're all on the same page theologically, mm-hmm. but how do we pull our resources um, together? And yeah. it's interesting because we did that vacation in Bible school, and that was kind of towards the beginning of our exploring partnership with other yeah. local Mennonite churches in this way. And what since then, our church has continued to do activities with the five other um, Mennonite mm-hmm. churches in the area. And um, it's been talking about a journey, an ecumenical journey, it's been really interesting because it's helped us connect with broader churches and Mm -hmm. um, church uh, people from other cultures, like our Congolese friends from Akron and and Salem, you know, having so many participants um, who who are Spanish speaking. And that has brought a whole other dimension for our kids, you know, to experience Mm. the world as in the Christian world and the church world as a bigger place. Um, and a multicultural uh, place that of, where Christ is brought together, this kingdom family, it's really special. So mm-hmm. I wanted to share that one. And uh, do you do you have any um, uh, questions about, you, you know a little bit about Oak Grove, um, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm just thinking about, you know, f- maybe for some of our listeners, um, the, the context of these different churches getting together, they're s- spread up, up um, a little bit far apart geographically, um, yes. you know, not not too extensively, but enough that it must have just the first step of planning must have been where is the best place to hold this so that everyone can it, best easiest you know participate and um, it's so interesting to to see how um, you know on on the, the previous um, vacation Bible school that we just mentioned you know everyone's kind of in the same area within the same city and then here there are many different um, areas participating, but in the same, um, uh, the, theologic, you know, um, you know, all of them have the Mennonite tradition in common. Yes. Um, but, um, but I think both of them must have been so well worth, um, the time and effort that it took to put them together and to be participants in it. And, oh, yeah. um, I'm quite jealous of all of these ideas that came after I was, um, done being a kid, you know? <laughs> Well, me too. I mean, I, I didn't experience anything like that either. Um, yeah. So it's neat that that was possible for like mm. later generation. Um, right. Yeah. Um, and then the, the final two slides I wanted to share with you are just stories about what our church has done. Mm. That's once again, oh, wow. outside the box. And mm. so 
in place of having vacation in Bible school uh, for this particular slide, it was another summer. Um, we decided to bring in an outside person who does shows with reptiles. Oh, wow. And um, so we went to, in this pavilion, this is in um, Christmas Run Park. And so wow. we wanted something that would be very accessible for people and would bless people in our city. And so we announced that we would have this reptile person coming and doing their their um, show, their presentation in this pavilion. They had already come once and done a presentation at our church, but in this case, we were able to to, to rent this pavilion and, and you know prepare food for people, hot dogs and other um, snack items, and then they could come eat, eat before you pet the reptiles <laughs> and then come <laughs> and pet the reptile. And, nice. um, and so she went around and showed um, you know, snakes and turtles and all variety of reptiles and, and families and, and kids seem to really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. And so we got to thinking, okay, even if we, being a smaller church, we don't always have the energy or resources to, to do a week long mm -hmm. uh, program. Oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so then we decided, well, let, we can do one day uh, programs oh, yeah. and um, bring in an outside person and that can also be meaningful and that's what this slide is this is another example Ooh. this person is called the bug guy and I he guess. shows there he is holding a i think a tarantula <laughs> but I he had all so, types yeah. of I know. Uh, spiders and bugs and um and a praying mantis and a variety of different things and he would uh -huh. bring them out and the kids loved it and they could come oh, and yeah. uh, he would let them hold certain bugs. And mm. I know John Longacre doesn't particularly like spiders. And this was the one time in his life where he's held a tarantula. <laughs> um, so the kids really loved the bug guy and their parents could come too. And we it had ice cream for people. And oh, yeah. um, once again, you know, make sure you separate the eating from the handling of the, <laughs> <laughs> of the bugs. But, but all that to say, like, I think vacation Bible school is um, something that is fantastic to do in a week and to tell the Bible stories and invite kids in and show hospitality. Mm -hmm. um, but some churches also find, even if they can do some day type event that is still for mm -hmm. kids, um, it still kind of gets at that desire during the summer to offer something to bless um, kids in, in the area. And it's also an expression of outreach. And um, I think you it, you do lose something when you don't have the week long program, mm -hmm. but sometimes still offering something like this does um, have a positive impact and bless the community. So um, do you have any thoughts about those um, those outreach events? Yeah, you, you bring up a great point that um, it, it is nice to, to make space for and to think about and consider the idea of having events that um, make the community feel much more um, not necessarily welcome, but much uh, like it's much easier for them to join, to take part. Because I, I think one thing about Vacation Bible School is that we were always encouraged to invite our friends to come along. And and I think that I did a few times. And um, and, and it's designed in such a way that, that it really doesn't feel like church and it's all just fun. But um, it's, it's, you know, in that case, it's only the people that you know that you can invite and that their schedules work out. Um, but if you have something like those one day things where, um, you know, it's through different channels, everyone is, you know, people are, more people are made available, uh, aware of what's happening, then yeah, and the person who just happens to think maybe they'll give it a try, you know, maybe that's something that they're interested in. And then they have the chance to um, take part in the activity. And like you say, when the activities are in, are in more um, public spaces, like at the park, then people can just happen to drop by and um, we, we never know what would come from that experience, from that first step that they take. Um, so it's interesting that um, um, uh, yeah, there's, uh, I'm trying to think of how to int introduce this person. So we've had Lena on the um, show before and then her husband, Jason, um, was even just telling me how um, they're doing vacation Bible school right now. and. His one daughter, I think, is um, maybe sixth grade in elementary school or so. And um, and then his other um, daughter is in second grade. And he was saying how the one daughter is just so excited and um, is so happy and looks forward to vacation Bible school every day. And he said, the other, the oldest daughter, she says, 
that she doesn't like going. And then he, he said to me, but I saw her and she was dancing the dances and singing the songs and having a good time. Mm-hmm. So it's something really special about Vacation yes. Bible School. Mm-hmm. That is an interesting point uh, with, with age. I think, mm-hmm. yes, Vacation Bible School does probably have a, an appeal that is for a little bit younger audience. And mm-hmm. when you probably get up to um, middle school or high school, mm-hmm. maybe it's more like a camp, getting away uh-huh. to like a church camp or maybe a youth retreat. Because mm-hmm. I, I think, or, I mean, sometimes the middle schoolers or high schools volunteer for to lead Vacation Bible School. But I feel like, in general, it's like, I don't want to say that they age out, but it just, it feels like the, the, the appeal of mm-hmm. that model seems to, to reach younger ages mm-hmm. better. Um, mm-hmm. So, but I know in our area, we have um, a lot of uh, the older kids who do go to like Camp Luz, that they have oh, a yeah. great like um, mm-hmm. summer programs. And right. I've been able to um, be a like, camp pastor a few times for those. And it, it's really interesting. The, the environment at camp is so unique and distinct from church life. And it creates a uh, sp- space for community and for enjoying nature, but also a deep space for spirituality. Mm-hmm. And um, one of my peers, who's also a pastor, Todd Martin at Smithville Mennonite, during his sabbatical, he spent a lot of time at Camp Luz and really mm-hmm. kind of said, I know this is a side topic, but it is kind of related to this idea of creating a, an, another space where kids can learn mm-hmm. about God. Um, but he said it kind of reinvigorated his spirituality just to kind of get away from the normal rhythm of of church life and do more at camp. And so after he came back from his sabbatical, he started a, a weekly tradition of, of time by the fire um, where they have like a little storytelling time on a Sunday evening huh. and people come and you know, he makes some simple snacks and it's like, it's like they sing songs like you'd sing around a fire. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of richness there in doing things outside of the box and in a space that you wouldn't typically be doing spiritual things, but then to do that, um, it can be really rich. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I'm um, thinking about vacation Bible school. I just have to say our church recently hasn't offered vacation Bible school. We've con- oh. kind of continued trying to think outside the box and we've done some mm-hmm. of these activities I've been mentioning mm-hmm. and we do have um, summer programs like, and, and activities like we've done canoe trips with our, with our younger mm-hmm. kids and youth. And um, we were doing um, some things at camp Luz as a church, but, but having this discussion with you today makes me think, uh, how could we revisit Vacation Bible School or rediscover it mm-hmm. since it's been a while since we've done that week-long mm-hmm. thing? So mm-hmm. um, so I'm glad that you suggested this topic. It's getting me thinking, you know. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Does Yachio Bible Baptist Church have any type of Vacation Bible School? Um, that is another thing where the, um, the Baptist churches in the area get together. Um, uh, and uh, and it, it is a week-long, and it's at um, a camp, kind of a campground. Oh, nice. and so yeah, and so it's for um, it, it's for everyone, you know, families and kids, and then yeah, and so it's it's basically just a, a big church camp that they do. But um, yeah, otherwise, I think that's that's the extent of it. Um, I think in in our context in this area, it's a little bit harder to be able to to gather enough youth together. Oh, um, okay. To to have the same kind of feel of what a, a vacation Bible school would be, and, and of course. Um, <laughs> Our summer vacation is not until, you know, um, the middle of July is when it starts and it, and it ends um, in at the end of uh, August. So it's quite short. Um, and then um, kids, actually elementary kids, they have homework that they have to do during <laughs> summer vacation as well. Oh, so no. it's oh, very, very tricky to be able to find um, a way that everyone's schedules could fit uh, to work that out. and. and- what do you think uh, Vacation Bible School um, looks like in a Japanese context? Does it have similar elements to what we would expect in ours here, like singing, snacks, games, mm-hmm. uh, storytelling? What do you think? Yeah, I really think that it does. Um, from I from the the few reports that I heard, yeah, it it really does sound like 
um, it could be something very similar to to what we were um, to what maybe you and I both experienced. And um, yeah, especially uh, a deviation from the the songs that the kids are used to hearing to hearing more songs that are just you know with the um, the guitar and like you say a little bit much more lively and um, and I think the 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 biggest takeaway I think from from all vacation Bible schools is the kids feel um, like they they really have a place in the church and that, um, that finally the 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 stories about the Bible are more accessible and taught in a way that that they can understand and um, yeah as we were um, preparing for today um, I kept thinking about um, how when you're a kid you 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 just kind of think that maybe everyone is is on vacation at the same time as you are and um you don't think about until you're older um the real time commitment that it takes for people to to put this on you know like the teachers that have to go there every you know first of all all the planning and all the preparation but then to execute the the bible school as well you know the teachers it it can only be consistent consisting of people who have a week off also that they can give at that time. And, and that's, that's fewer and fewer people, um, in the congregation. And so it's, um, something that you don't think about, but as I think about now, I think, wow, I'm really just so thankful, um, for everyone who, who did that. And when you showed me one of those pictures and I saw Janet Miller, I thought, oh yeah, she was also very much involved and she was a teacher too, as her job was a teacher. And now she's spending a week to be in during her vacation to be a Bible school teacher as well. And um, uh, it's something that, that I think that we're all very, very thankful for. That's a really good point that vacation Bible school or any type of activity like that takes a lot of of, of volunteers who are willing to give up their time. Mm -hmm. And, and when you're young and a, and a child, you kind of just expect those things to be there. Yeah. You don't think about yeah, the mechanics right. of how yeah. did <laughs> this event get planned or who bought the snacks yeah. or, you know, right. um, but um, now as an adult, I can really appreciate people who have given their mm -hmm. time like that to, like you say, pour into us or even mm -hmm. pour into our children now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's really important to, yeah. to be thankful for people willing, being willing to serve like that. I agree hundred percent. Yeah. Um, would you say that, uh, there was a little bit of a legacy of vacation Bible school in the sense that for you, did it, did it boost your faith? Did, did it leave a lasting contribution to who you are today or? Yeah, I think that it for sure did. Um, I think that that just the fact that, um, I mean, the fact that I've mentioned this so many times, the fact that it made, me feel like I had a real place in the church and um, that um, that the kids were important, uh, an important part of the church too. And, and yeah, then just all those stories, you know, um, being able to see them either acted out or, um, you know, have these wonderful drawings and whatnot. Um, it really, really helped to understand the Bible better. And, and um, I think that especially, you know, I think there, there must be a, a, a number of kind of common themes that come up, you know, like Daniel or Jonah or something like that. But I think that it, when Jesus or some ministry of Jesus's was the theme that it made it, him feel a lot more real as a person. Um, and uh, I think that being able to, to be made him more accessible and, um, the story's more poignant for for me as a kid and i um, able to relate it to my life a little bit better. I, th I think that for sure, yeah. I think Vacation Bible School, I looked forward to it so much every year and, and I think it really had a big impact um, on me, I think. And did you, do you, likewise for yourself, did you have any kind of similar um, impact from, from your experience? Definitely. I think um, just the um the people that were involved like you could list several that you remembered and i can think of those who were there in the wheeling vineyard when i was growing up who took time to pour energy and and to me and and our, my friends and others um and the songs that have stuck with me and like you said mm -hmm. like making the stories relatable i think kind of some of those foundational memories of hearing the stories and um 
they stick with me. And sometimes even I'll, t- I'll share experiences I had at church when I was young with my kids today and it'll oh, connect yeah. with their experience. Uh-huh. So, yeah. So I'm grateful that it existed and it's a, gr- it's a good vehicle for um, communicating faith to um, children and um, blessing, blessing our, our neighborhood. And when we can show mm-hmm. hospitality there and, and um, yeah, so I'm grateful. And I'm, I'm also glad that you suggested that we explore this today. Thank you so mm-hmm. much, Barney. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Is there anything else that you wanted to mention before we close our time? No, just that um, we're all very happy for you to um, join us today. And hopefully this has sparked some of your memories um, and um, of maybe times that you were also in vacation Bible school as well or, or um, teaching or planning or organizing one. And we are very thankful for the time that you've spent with us today. And we hope that you too are looking forward to our next episode as much as we are. And so for Barney and Jacob, this is the Two World Podcast, and we will see you again.